Good morning. This is the adult Sunday school class for First United Methodist in Brookhaven. My name is Evelyn Peavy, and I'll be leading us through our book today. Um, today is May the 5th, and we are on Lesson 10, page 96 in our Sunday school book. And um, I'd like to open with prayer, if you'll join me. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for Jesus, for sending him to us, for providing us a way to reach you. Help us to be mindful and grateful of our relationship with you and help us to learn more about you every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, our passage this week uh, gives us a, a passage in the Bible. It's John 14, verses 1 through 14. And uh, it tells us that our purpose in this lesson today is to research, to dip into how an encounter with Jesus, the Son, makes possible a new experience of God the Father. And what a wonderful purpose that is. So I'll begin with the scripture passage. Again, this is John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How, how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus replied, don't you know me, Philip? even after I have been with you all this time. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe on account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Our book points out the key verse in this passage as Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. To give a little context to this passage, this is taking place on the night before Jesus is to be crucified. The disciples are learning a lot of things that they maybe have had hints about them, but they didn't realize. And Jesus is letting them know about mm, some things that, that are very anxiety producing for them. And as I'm sure you know, whenever we are anxious uh, or sad or even in despair, we're looking for comfort. 
And Jesus provides that comfort to his disciples by assuring them that he is going to prepare a place for them and that they have already been exposed to the things they need to know. And he comforts them. Um, if we look back before this passage in uh, John 13, some things that have been revealed to the disciples on this very evening that this conversation is taking place. Um, they have learned that there is someone among them that is going to betray Jesus. Jesus has washed their feet. He has acted as their servant when in their minds they they should they should be the servant of Jesus. And so he's turning things sort of upside down. He tells them to wash each other's feet. In other words, to be servants to one another. And um, he identifies Judas as the betrayer. And he also tells them that he's going to leave and that they cannot follow where he's going. And he tells them that Peter, Simon Peter, the rock, is going to deny him, to deny knowledge of Jesus three times before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. Um, imagine their despair, their concern, their anxiety. Oh my goodness, none of this should happen. And yet Jesus is telling them it's going to happen. It was a lot for them to process. Um, and certainly, I think that we can identify with that. Uh, we learn things that we never expected, we, we don't want, and um, fills us with tension and anxiety. And yet Jesus says to the group, do not let your hearts be troubled. That's going to be hard for them to do, isn't it? He's told them a lot of troubling things. He's revealed to them a lot of troubling things. And uh, that's going to be hard. So what does he do? He redirects them to their faith in God and in him. Remember that Jesus has spent three years living with this group of disciples and traveling with them and uh, showing them every day how to live, how to interact with one another, how to care for each other. He's been with them every day for three years. And in this moment, he redirects them to think about all they've learned in the last three years. And he's reminding them that as he has promised them many times, Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. He says to trust God and to trust in him. He said he's going to prepare a place for them. And he says that he'll return for them. But he also says that they already know the way. He says that they know God because they know him. He says that believers will do even greater works than he has done. And that's going to be hard to top because remember, Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. He's done a lot of miracles, but he says that his followers are going to do even greater works than him. And he also promises that what we ask for in his name, he will respond. He will answer us. In case you're new here, that's why Christians say in Jesus' name we pray. They're, they're calling on this, this passage. Um, Jesus had spent, as I said, three years teaching, preaching, healing, traveling them, showing them with his actions how to live, how to love, and how to care for others. He has prepared them 
to continue on his work after he leaves them. And probably like most of us, they didn't feel prepared. They didn't feel like they knew all the answers. They didn't feel like they knew what to do, but they had been prepared. They had been corrected and praised by Jesus. They had followed him, they had made mistakes and they would continue to make mistakes. But they knew that Jesus loved them and that he had prepared them to carry on his work. The book tells us it's kind of like a pep talk. Um, so how did he do that? How did he reassure them? He reminded them of what they had already knew. And don't we do that when things are tense or anxious, we're worried or concerned? How can we comfort ourselves? We think about what we already know, our past experiences, what we've learned, and we turn to our faith, our trust in God and in Jesus. He reminded them of those things. And he had lived out for them, right in front of them what God is like. So what better, what better preparation could you have? Um, our, sometimes it's hard for us to understand sort of the place that the disciples were in at this moment. Remember that they had been raised in the Jewish faith and approaching God directly was not done. Um, um, Great leaders, Moses, went up to the mountaintop to talk to speak with God. But your average person, your average Joe, wouldn't dream of doing that. God would be just too awesome. And, and I use that word in its original sense. Um, I'm not saying, oh, the pancakes this morning were awesome. I'm saying that God filled his people with fear and wonder and humility and he was just too awesome to speak to and here jesus is again turning their understanding of the world on its head and saying no if you know me then you know him and yes you can approach him and speak with him and know him and trust in him um our theme is this reassurance that Jesus is giving his, his followers that they really have been prepared for what's coming next. Um, his actions to reassure them, to remind them of what they already know, um, and, and to believe and to have faith. Um, Jesus said, if you, if you pray in my name, I will grant you. Um, so we need to talk about that. Um, can we pray for just anything we want? If we love Jesus, then we're going to want to be like him. And one of the main things that we're going to do is to keep his commandments. We all memorized the Ten Commandments when we were children. Um, but here Jesus is giving just two commandments love God and love your neighbor and don't those two things cover everything if we love God and we love our neighbor then what are we going to ask in Jesus name we're going to ask that his will be done in our lives and in others lives and Jesus is going to answer that prayer um, and we know Sometimes the answer is no, but at least it's an answer. And if we are keeping, keeping our lives in tune with Jesus, if we love Jesus, then we love God and we love one another. And that's what Jesus is asking us to do, what he's telling the disciples to do, but most importantly, what he's telling us to do through his words to the disciples. Join me in a closing prayer. 
Loving God, thank you for reassuring us along our journey. Thank you for Jesus, who helps us know and experience you more fully. Give us the confidence and spiritual maturity to love you and our neighbor with bold confidence and tender compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.